Apple this week announced a second generation HomePod to replace the original full-size HomePod. Yes, the one that was discontinued, and it brings improved smart home features. The new HomePod will feature built-in sensors that can be used in HomeKit, along with matter and thread support. So let's jump into all the things that are new, my take on it, and let's have a look at some of the new features that also come into the HomePod Mini. First, let's start looking at the design. The second generation HomePod features a backlit touch surface that illuminates from edge to edge. This is similar to the HomePod Mini. HomePod is available in white and what Apple say a new color midnight, which is basically a black color. It's made with mesh fabric and also features a color matched woven power cable. The second generation HomePod has a single four inch woofer paired with five tweeters and five microphones. The previous version had seven microphones and seven tweeters, so this is slightly down. The new smart speaker features the S7 chip, which powers the HomePod. The S7 chip is probably needed for the room sensing technology which Apple says can read sound reflections to determine its position. So if it's near a wall or in free space, it can adjust the audio in real time. Just like the original HomePod and the HomePod Mini, users can stereo pair two speakers and use them for Dolby Atmos speakers via eARC for the Apple TV 4K. Plus, with Siri on HomePod, users can control what's playing on their Apple TV and free. Please know though, you cannot pair a HomePod Mini and the full-size HomePod together, and I doubt very much you'll be able to pair a new HomePod with the original HomePod due to the specification difference. HomePod also supports AirPlay 2 multi-room capabilities, which means if you have multiple HomePods throughout your home, the sound will play throughout in sync if you choose for that to happen. Now let's look at the new smart home features in the new HomePod. While the HomePod looks pretty much identical to the first generation, it's the new smart features that make this new HomePod shine. The new HomePod features built-in temperature and humidity sensors that can be used as triggers for smart home automations. So you could use the built-in sensors to trigger an automation if a room gets too warm to close the blinds. Apple has said the accuracy may decrease in some situations where audio is playing for extended period of time. I have tested the temperature and humidity sensors in the HomePod Mini after they were activated, and these seem to register pretty accurate readings. Of course, I need more time with them to determine long-term accuracy. If you want to learn more about these sensors and my full in-depth walkthrough, then a video is coming above now. One thing I do want to point out that's not in that video, whilst these sensors are exposed to HomeKit, they're not exposed to third-party apps, just like the HomePods are not. So that's a real disappointment that if you're wanting to use even more advanced automations that you find in third-party apps, you won't be able to use these sensors at the time of this video. The new HomePod will use its five built-in microphones to listen for smoke or carbon monoxide alarms. Then it will send a notification to a user's iPhone if it detects these to let them know. However, this feature is not arriving until spring 2023. Apple did also say you should not rely on this in emergency situations. Just like the HomePod Mini, the new model includes a U1 ultra wideband chip, which provides support for and off of content on iPhone. This feature allows you to and off calls, music and podcasts and other things to a HomePod just by holding your iPhone close to the smart speaker. Now I've used this a number of times when I'm making calls and I want to be hands-free in my office and this has worked really well. But I don't personally think that Apple has finished yet with U1 and the true potential. Ultra wide band could bring a change with how a user interacts in the smart home and personal control. So an example of this would be if a user is wearing an Apple Watch and placed a HomePod in a room, HomeKit would know your location in your home. So if you're then entering, say, the living room with your Apple Watch on your wrist, it could trigger HomeKit compatible devices in that room based on your personal preferences. Now, this is all hypothetical and it's not one of the features that's in the HomePod. But this is something I've been talking about for a long time, and I'd certainly like to see Apple implement this in the future. Just like the other HomePods, the HomePod can act as a home hub, which means it can power things like HomeKit secure video with supported cameras. The HomePod analyzes the feeds of your supported cameras, looking for presence of people, pets, and cars, and now packages. All the video is processed on the device itself and is sent to iCloud servers with full encryption. Because it's a home hub, you can also remotely access your smart home and enable advanced automation control. It also features intercom, 
which is on the previous version and also HomeKit doorbell chimes. Before we continue with the video, and I want to introduce you to HomeKit Authority. If you're watching one of our videos for the first time, then this is an online community dedicated to everything HomeKit and Smart Home. We cover the latest news about Apple Smart Home platform, honest and detailed reviews, and tutorials that help you get the most out of HomeKit and the Smart Home. While you're here, don't forget to check out the rest of the videos on this channel. And if you'd like to stick around and be part of this community, then we'd love to have you. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also the bell button to be notified when new content lands. You can also follow us on our other social platforms, including Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for more content. And you can find us at Follow HomeKit on those various platforms. Thank you for the support. Let's get back into the video. It's also Matter and Thread compatible. Just like the HomePod Mini, the second generation HomePod can act as a Matter smart home controller and thread border router for management of matter devices. This means devices like the Eve motion blinds or the Nanoleaf Essentials can join the thread network using the HomePod. Thread is based on the universally deployed internet protocol version six standard, but unlike other standards like Zigbee, thread enabled devices create a mesh network that connects all the devices together. A thread network can self heal. So if one accessory in your thread network becomes unavailable, the data packets will select an alternative route automatically and continue to work. A thread network expands pretty much automatically as you add more accessories. An example, if your Eve Aqua is beyond the reach of your HomePod and you have, say, a Eve Energy somewhere in the middle, it could connect the Eve Aqua to the thread network. So with devices that need that extra reach, then this is a great option. If you want to learn more about thread, then a video is coming above now, which will tell you all about it. But based on my test of thread, I found my device to respond quicker, lose connection less often, and have better range than Bluetooth devices. It also features Bluetooth 5.0 and connects via Wi-Fi. Now looking at some of the privacy aspects, privacy for Internet of Things devices should be number one priority for anyone that's got these devices in their home. After all, connected devices like smart speakers are in our homes listening to what we say and sometimes, in some cases, collecting this data. But with HomePod, all the information is sent to Apple service once Siri has been activated. Plus, information sent to Apple is not associated with the user's Apple ID, nor is any personal information sold to any third party, according to Apple. To further protect user privacy, the personal request feature will only work if the user's iPhone is within the home which the HomePod is located. According to Apple, all smart home communications are always end-to-end -end encrypted, so they can't even be read by Apple, including camera recordings with HomeKit Secure Video. And when Siri is used, the audio of the request is not stored by default. These features give users peace of mind that their privacy is protected at home. Now, the second generation HomePod will be sold in the US, UK, Australia, and a number of other countries, and it starts at 299 pounds or 299 dollars pricing varies per country shipping will start on the 3rd of february 2023 and you can pre-order starting today i will of course be reviewing the new homepod second generation once it arrives so don't forget to subscribe to the channel as that's greatly appreciated and you'll be notified when that video comes out. If you've liked this video, then appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up as it really helps us out spread the word. Also, don't forget to follow us on our other social media channels at Follow HomeKit on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Thank you very much. I'll speak to you soon.